you like film learning? Well, like this video and hit subscribe and support us on our way to 100,000 subscribers. What do you say, Lawrence? Thank you, Jesus! Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning good. And we're at the YouTube Space in Sydney. And welcome to the second part of the CGI stunt double tutorial. Now I'm just gonna keep my voice in because I don't want to seem like a crazy person shouting in an open space. <laughs> So last time we were in Adobe Fuse and we built our character, we jumped into Mixamo and we added some motion capture animation. This time around we're going to go into Cinema 4D, we're going to refine the materials of our character, we're going to add some lenses to the eyes to get a bit of reflection going on there, and we're going to light the character to match our scene, as well as touch on some facial animation. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay guys, here we are in Cinema 4D, so let's import our model. Let's head up to File, hit Open, Find the FBX file you want to work with. I'm going to go with waving, it was just my model waving hello. Let's then hit open and immediately a pop-up box comes up, which we're going to routinely ignore, just hit OK. If I thought there was anything worth mentioning here, I would gang, but there isn't, so bugger it. So right away you can see things are a little screwy, but we'll fix them up in a second. First off, we need to fix the project settings because they're set to Cinema 4D's defaults, and that ain't gonna work for us. Let's head up to Edit, down to Project Settings, and let's make sure our frame rate is set to 24. From there, we'll head up to our Render Settings right here, and then change our output from the crappy 800 by 600 by going to Film, and then selecting HDTV 24. That will give us that full HD frame to work in. Right, that's that done. Time to fix this model, and by fix, I mean we're gonna start from scratch. Now you can see currently that our model is transparent, and if I quickly turn the transparency off on each of these layers, and we do a quick render like so, you can see that these textures look pretty bad. I mean, just look at those eyelashes. I look like some sort of emo wanker. Nobody understands me. So what's our next step then? Well, it's going to be deleting all those textures, because honestly, it's easier to start from scratch than deal with those. So let's delete them. All. BAM! Now all we have is this grey blob of a model. Now time to fix that, but first I'm going to add one light to our scene, otherwise our test renders can look a little flat. I'll also enable soft shadows right here. Now guys this isn't our final lighting, but it'll help out with our material creation. So let's create a new material by double clicking right here, and then by double clicking on the name we can name it. And what we'll do is make each material correspond with the different parts of the model that are up here in the object manager. The only one we're going to change is the lashes, which for some odd reason are called default by default. So same rule, double click on the name and let's call it lashes. So as you can see, if I click on each one of these parts of the model, it highlights a different part of the model. These models aren't very complicated, so it's easy to retexture them. Now let's get started. So we have one new material created. Let's start by naming that body to correspond with our first part of our model up here. From there, let's drag it up onto that body layer in our object manager where the material is now missing. From there, we'll double click on the material itself and start by applying the different layers. For starters, we'll start with the color. We want to select it, then head over to texture, click this little arrow right here, select load image, find the folder you saved the model to, and you'll in turn find a folder named similar to your model name. Here we go, right here. So if we open that folder, you'll see a bunch of UV texture files. Now the one we're looking for is Body Diffuse. Here it is. Click that, click open, and just hit no to that search path pop-up. We'll then follow that by heading down to normal, ticking that on, and grabbing our texture image the same way. Open that folder up once again, find the image called Body Normal. It's this blue looking one. There we go. Hit open, hit no, and that's two of the three imports for our materials related to our skin. Now our next tip in the skin is dealing with reflectance, or gloss, and it's a little more complicated. So before we get into that, let's knock off the rest of these materials. So let's follow the same steps. Make a new material, name the material Lashes, drag it onto the Lashes object up here, and open it up. Now funnily enough, we're going to use the exact same materials as our skin. We're going to import the color map just like before, import our normal map just like before, and finally we'll head down to alpha. Let's check that to activate our alpha and then import our texture. Now all this is is a little file down here called body opacity. 
import it, click no, and all we want to do is uncheck every box except the soft. You can now see those previously stupid emo lashes have become less lashy and more in tune with the rest of our model. Nice. From there, we're gonna to move to the eyes, repeating the exact same steps as our body layer. Create the material, name it, add it to the model, import the color map, import the normal map, and then we'll deal with the reflection in the eyes later as well. Let's then move on to the other layers following the exact same steps. Create the material, name it, drag it on, import the maps, and what you'll be left with is a model that looks like this. It's getting there, but it ain't done yet. Now let's tackle that reflectance, or gloss, or whatever you want to call it. This is where things can get a little tricky. Not hard, but just not as easy as before. So let's start with our body, or skin layer. This is where you'll spend more time. For the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Our skin reflects light, and we have to tell Cinema 4D how much we want it to reflect. Let's open up our body material, head to Reflectors, and in the layer menu here, we want to add a new layer. So let's make that a Beckman and rename it Skin. From there, we're going to click on said skin layer, change the attenuation to additive, the roughness to 63%, the strength to 100%, the specular to 25%, and the bump to 100%. Now guys, this is going to look weird, but stick with me. Next, we'll head down to Layer Fresnel. We're going to set the Fresnel to dielectric and set the IOR to 1.45. And you can now see that it softens out the layer greatly. From there, we'll head back to our default specular layer. Head down to Layer Color, and we're going to import our gloss texture. So just hit Import Image, find the body gloss texture, click OK, and as always, No. We'll then finish this off by changing the mix strength right down the bottom to 50%. This will give our character a nice balance between the glossy reflective skin and the reflection map that it came with from Adobe Fuse. Now guys, by all means, you can repeat these steps for every single one of your materials, or you can simply import the gloss layer on the default specular layer right here. It's completely up to you, but I would encourage you to try out these settings and have a play with all of these, because you might actually discover something that you like even more. Now the final thing we need to make for this model to make it look a bit more... Uh, real-ish is to add some reflective lenses in the eyes. But first, we need something to reflect, right? So, here's a quick cheat. Let's quickly head up here and add a cube. Bam! Ooh, that's a big boy. Okay, I'm just going to use the shrink controls to just scale that down a little bit. Let's then move it in front of our model and slightly to the right. Bam! Let's then make a brand new material, and instead of getting fancy, let's just tick on luminance. We'll drag and drop that material on top of our cube, and we now have a big old cube light in our scene. That should reflect pretty well. From there, we need to make the lenses. In order to do this, let's head up to the primitives and grab ourselves a sphere. And then let's grab our scale tool and shrink that sucker down to almost eye size. This is when our multi-view comes in handy. Let's head up, switch to front view. We can then move them into place using the axis arrows, these three colored arrows right here. Now that I have the sphere in place in the front view, let's switch over to the right view and make sure they're actually sitting inside the head, which they're not. I highly recommend keeping all the views open and zooming in on the perspective view. That's the one we've been working in this whole time. That way you can actually see what's going on in real time with your model. The end result you want is like this. The lens sitting right on the eye, but below the eyelid. From there, we're gonna copy and paste using Control C and Control V, and using the same axis arrows, adjust our second sphere to match our other eye. And there we go. But there's a problem, gang. If I hit play and get our animation going, our lenses don't follow the head. Well, that simply won't do. So let's fix that. Head down to this green thing that says Mixamo Rig Hips. We'll then collapse that down and you'll see Spine. Collapse that down and keep collapsing these menus, there's a lot of them, until you reach Head. We'll then grab both of our spheres and drop them in under that head rig and make them a child of it. 
Now, if we play back that animation, what do you know? They stick. Let's give ourselves an Anakin style, yippee, and never do that again. So now all we have to do is make them transparent and reflective. So let's make one more material. We'll just call it lens. There we go. Now all we have to do here is make it transparent. Tick. Set the refraction preset to glass and then head to reflectance. We'll add one more layer, make it a Beckman, and then we'll increase the specular strength to 50%. Done. Let's then drag and drop our lens material on both of our spheres and see if it's working with a test render. Nice. So now what? Well, our model is done. We just gotta light it and position it to match our scene. And there's two ways to do this. You can save your file, import it into After Effects, add the Cinema 4D file to your comp, and just go back and forth adjusting things until you're happy. Or the easier way to do it is to import a still of our scene and add it as a background and do all that sort of stuff within Cinema. In order to do that, let's add ourselves a background. Head up on this menu here that looks like a grid, Click and hold and find the one labeled background and boom, instant background. And guess what? I know it's a terrible shock, but we do have to make one more material to add a still shot from our background. So make sure you've actually saved a still from your scene. So from there, all we have to do with this material is simply import a still into the color map section of this material and then apply that material to our background. There we go. So from there, I'm going to add a camera. So I'll head up to this menu, the one that looks like a camera, and just click it. We'll then click the crosshair here in the object manager, which will allow us to actually look through the camera from a first person perspective, which in turn will allow us to better position the camera in our scene. So what we can do is just use the controls here to position the camera so our model now fits into the scene that we've already shot. Mine is a still shot, which makes this a lot easier, but for moving shots, it's a totally separate tutorial, gang. I do cover the basics of this in my advanced multiple shot combination tutorial, and that's in the description. Right, now our model is in position. A good tip now is to head to the object manager, to tags, down to Cinema 4D tags, and add a protection tag to your camera. That way you can't mess it up by accidentally moving it. Next step, well, we've got to match the lighting. And this guys, like many of our effects in film learning, is 100% based on your shot. So for example, in my shot, I clearly have a light behind me that's quite bright, giving me that highlight down my face here. So the idea would be to replicate that on my model. To do that, I'll head up, grab a new light, enable soft shadows like so, and then using the multicam view, I'll adjust the light into place. Now guys, this might be a little bit fiddly, and I recommend doing plenty of test renders using this button right here. There we go. And just keep doing that until you're happy. So after a little to and fro, I have my light in position. I'm now gonna add a fill light to the right of my model, as I actually had a softbox light over here when I filmed. For this, I'm gonna use an area light, which will give me a much softer effect when I'm lighting. So once again, head to the multi-cam view, position it correctly with plenty of testing until it's right. Lastly, I added a key light to the front of my model as I had one in the scene I shot as well. I'm just gonna add one more area light and of course, put it into position. Now guys, once you have all these lights in position, be sure and experiment with the intensity down here, which is how bright these lights are. They don't all have to be 100% and they don't all have to be white. I personally hit the K right here and I play with the white balance Kelvin value. But like I said, go nuts and really just have a play. There's always the undo button. So once you've matched your lighting and your camera angle, it's time to remove the background. And this is as simple as just by heading to the object manager, clicking these two circles twice until they're both red. From there, we have one final step with our model. Yeah, I know this is a long episode, but look at what we've done. Now this last step is going to address the shortcomings of the model. As you've probably noticed, the model itself isn't exactly high polygon. And by that I mean, the edges aren't smooth and it's pretty noticeable when I zoom in right here. You can see the edging of the model is quite jagged. To fix that, we're gonna add what's called a subdivision surface. And what this does is, well, exactly what it says. It subdivides the surface of our model, increasing the detail and generally smoothing out the crappy parts. Now to do this, we first have to place all the parts in the model in a group together, 
kind of like pre-composing them in After Effects. So let's highlight all the objects of our model, like so. Right click and select Group Objects. Done. They're now within a null object. From there, we'll head up, click this icon here and add a subdivision surface. Now if we click on this bad boy, you'll see by default that the subdivision editor is set to 2 and the renderer is set to 3. These values are a little high for what we need to do. Basically, the higher these numbers are, the more smoothing and division of the polygons takes place, and it also increases the render time per frame. So in order to take advantage of the subdivision surface effect, and save our stress levels on rendering, let's knock both those values down to just one. Next, all we have to do is grab our grouped model, drag it up to the subdivision until you see this downward arrow, which means it's becoming a child of it, drop it off, and BOOM! As you can see, our model has smooth edges now. Now in case you didn't see the change, let's switch back and forth. Here it is off, and back on again. Off, and back on again. Pretty dramatic and we didn't have to do much at all. The reason I'm showing you how to turn it off is pretty simple too. This animation isn't going to play in real time with this subdivision on, so if you plan on adjusting anything, turn it off and save yourself a lot of stress. So our model is now all set up, we just have to cover a few render settings to make it look even better. So let's head up to render settings, this button right here with a little cog on it, and then we'll head down to anti-aliasing. Let's change that from geometry to best. Now if your computer can handle it, I would recommend changing the minimum level to 2x2 two two and the maximum level to 8x8. Eight eight. But see how you go there, it might be a little bit too much for it. I'm also going to head to save and make sure the alpha channel is turned on. Now I realise this is a long episode gang, but I want to touch on the face of our model briefly, because it's a bit stiff. In most circumstances, you may want to give your model an expression rather than just a vacant stir. To do that, collapse our null object down and click on this icon within our body. This is called a pose morph expression, and it's where all the controls of our facial rig sit. As you can see, there is quite a few of them, and by a few, I mean a crap load. So say you want your model to be smiling. Just head down, find the smile left and smile right controls and crank them up to 100%. My best advice here guys is to play with all of these sliders, find out what they do, and find an expression that works for you. The best part is, you can animate your model's face with these. I wish I had time to go through the animation process in this episode, but it's already way longer than I would like. Please sound off in the comments if you'd like an episode dedicated to facial animation because it really is going to take a whole episode to explain this and actually show the animation in progress. So guys, we've taken that base character model with just the motion data applied to it, we've refined the materials, and we've lit it to match our scene. And that's gone from this to this. My God. So guys, that's brought us to the end of part two of our CGI stunt double tutorial. In part three, we're going to be compositing that model into our shot in After Effects, so look forward to that. But once again, guys, that is my time. If you did enjoy the episode, please like and share it. If you're new here, why not hit that subscribe button? We've got our Patreon info right there, as well as our social media crap above my head. Part one of our CGI stunt tutorial is right there, and there's a random video right there. But until next time, guys, and part three rolls around, keep learning.